and off we go to a terrible start. Stalled it. Okay, we got going pretty quick. Alex is just taking off enemy. He's also had starting issues. We both had issues starting our bike. I need a full rebuild. Alex's piston is done too. So when they stall, it is really hard to get going. This is Melita. Welcome back to the channel. Melita is a small town in Manitoba and we are out racing today. This is a very sandy area. Anything in southern Manitoba kind of slowly turns, turns to sand. And this is no change. Obviously the benefit to sand is you fall and it doesn't really hurt too much. We're not Baja 1000 guys here going 5th gear wide open. Most of the time you're 4th, 3rd gear and kind of turning constantly. So you're at a reasonable pace that when you fall it really doesn't matter. He's right ahead of me. I'm so close to catching him. And this entire race we do a little bit of back and forth. Rewatching this footage, it was really hard to cut it down. Oh no, the guy's down. Watch out. That's always the hard part with these races. You just don't know what's around the next corner. Well, the hardest part about this was cutting it down from like a two hour course to being like 20 minutes. This is probably one of the flowiest up and down courses that there is now. And this first section is just up, down, flow, left, right, left, right. It's so good. If you want good riding, this is good riding. This is the track to come out to if you're looking at it. It's got a bit of everything. It's got black dirt. It's got a lot of sand track. Like this sand track is huge at the beginning. Sometimes they flip it though. Sometimes they do it in reverse. And we get the dirt first and then end with the sand. I kind of like starting on the sand. It kind of gets it done and dusted with. Sometimes towards the end of the race especially. It's a little bit of effort doing this big heavy sand where you have to push the bike around pretty aggressively because this is deep, deep soft sand. It is, if you go slow, very difficult, and if you go fast, easier, but a little sketchy. The transitions, oh, okay, were fast, and there's a couple times where you almost come up because you're coming in so fast and then there's a sharp left or right. You just don't even see it coming. There's so many hills and valleys and corners here. There's Alex, hey, he is in the bushes. We're on the Kawasaki 250F, he is on a 300 KTM, so that thing's a beast, it flies, like, that is a 450 of the Enduro Vespa. Well, if you're looking for a fast race bike, that's the way to go, honestly. I'm more of a four-stroke guy, as you know, but those things are beasts. My brother has a 300 Beta, and it is so fast, it is ridiculous. It wants to throw off the back. It is so fast off the line. It's fast through the trails. Very ridiculous. And there he goes again. Now I need new tires. I need a full fork -full rebuild. Probably the rear shock too. And my piston's ready for a rebuild too. So, excuses, excuses. I'm not going to win this one. It's so good following someone on this trail. That to the left is the sand track we were just on, so we just loop up around and come around it. You can see how soft these corners are. Hey, there he goes down again. I told you it's back and forth this entire race. It is the best track to ride on. It is not too rough, but it's it beats you up. You are tired by the end, there's no doubting that. I don't even know where my train of thought was. Okay, let's get going. Speed, speed, speed. Keep that flow going. You've got an hour and a half of racing, and on we go. We're through the hardest bit, which is that soft sand track, onto the trails. The trails, there's a lot of off camber things. You just saw that. It literally just slid sideways. You're on the middle of the trail, and it's like, ah, oh, no, get a little bit to the left there. No control. With a bit better set of tires, you might, you know, being a 2012 Kawasaki race bike, I have like a very narrow tire compared to what all these enduro hair scramble guys have. Their tires are literally like a good half a tire wider than mine. Wouldn't even fit on this bike. So I'm looking forward to hopefully getting something new. Let me know what you think for tire suggestions for either this bike or upcoming bikes I want to purchase. Being a little more hair scrambled. And even the new KX race bikes, they allow for a bigger tire clearance. It's one of the benefits to the new ones. Tires aren't as slow as people think. The bikes are getting faster. It, it's a good combination we've got. As you can see, like, we haven't had a cut in this scene in a long time. 
and it's just flowy, left, right, left, right, uphill, downhill, such a good trip. This is what riding's about, I really enjoy this. You know, I've been watching Midwest MX for a while now, and that kind of inspired to do these kind of talking videos. Sometimes you just need a break, sometimes it's a volunteer. But, um, yeah, I've been doing these videos for a long time, and I make a lot of these, or I take a lot of these videos, but never do a, a voiceover of the end. Midwest MX, if you've not seen him, he's a big YouTuber. He comments while he rides. I can't focus. I can't do two things. My mind just rambles on with nonsensical stuff compared to the barely sensical stuff that we're talking about now. And doing these, it's nice to come back in the winter season, rewatch them all, and edit them down. I do have another YouTube channel called Chris Clark Long Plays. If you want to watch the full like hour and a half of footage that was caught, it's a pretty good track. Like it's hard to not cut things out. It's so flowy. That little jump to drop. It's like there's a lot of sections like that where you want to hit it fast, but if you hit it too fast, you'll be flying into those trees. So you've got to time it and actually use the bike's weight to drop the weight down. Those off-camber logs, always fun. Off-camber hill, this entire section is so fast. Go, go, go. Off-camber, go. It's hard to see him, but that whole slope is sloping off to our left. And as you're accelerating, the back end is flicking out. But with those kind of jump into the trails, you have to drop the acceleration right before and naturally let your front wheel drop down just as you would if you slowed down going up the jump which would be a bad thing in that situation if you time it right it just dips it and follows the terrain because it's not that big of a jump it just drops it follows the terrain and keep the power this is one of the biggest sand hills it's just super deep kind of pushes you around and then you come out to just a really kind of deep sand slow section we'll skip through it a little bit there's another one. You probably could have hit that a little bit faster, but again, it's just a little hard still. Oh, there you go. I forgot about that bit. You're just coming in so hot over that thing. Alex did pretty much the same thing. He was right on my tail. I did not realize that this entire time. He's catching up. we got to keep pushing again. It's always a battle of how hard to push compared to I'm going to fall. Obviously, the pros had to figure it out, but, uh, you know, as amateurs, it's a little bit different. This feels fast. Watching this feels pretty nippy. Now I'm cautious, so you can tell going over that jump, like, I am cautious. I did not want to find another left turn there. We exit the trees and then come right back into them. There's a very few sections of field, and it just shoots right back into it. Then there we go. I don't know how I managed to pop the clutch and get that bike going. I do not have electric start. It is not starting great right now. So it was critical that as soon as I felt it stall, I slam it into first, drop the clutch, and hope it starts. And I was pretty much not moving, and it still started. There's enough compression left in them to keep riding, so we'll just keep going until it blows. Yep, get the flow. That's what we're talking about. These sections are so good, man. You just got those little jumpy bump things. I don't even know what to call them. It's just rollers. The terrain just rolls with you up and over. Always try and be faster than everyone downhill. To a degree, everyone can only go the same speed up a hill. Like, if you come into it at the natural kind of pace of the race and open up for those big hills, your third or fourth gear and you're up there. That's it, you, you really can't go that much faster. Bit better of tire, bit brighter position, pushing yourself back but not too far back, you'll help. But it, it's a minimal amount, but a lot of people break going downhill. Hey, tail slide. If you break going downhill, you are losing so much time. That is free speed. And that is from mountain biking that I learned, hey, we can actually go down this really fast. On motorcycles, it's like a natural thing. You just slow down going down. I mean, there's a lot more weight to the bike, so you got to take that in consideration. But if you can power down a hill, one, it's free acceleration. You accelerate 10 times faster. Gravity helps you. And two, nobody else is doing it apart from the really fast guys. I just need to put all this together to become faster and faster. Yeah. 
Outlaw class is what I do, and it is essentially a mix of everyone. Everyone who's faster than the entry level group, but doesn't want to do the afternoon two hour race essentially, or go to the age category one, which now I be 30 plus, which doesn't really make sense. It doesn't mean I'm equivalent. Damn, yeah, he's going fast now. It doesn't mean, I don't know, the age ones just don't make sense to me. I'd rather just go in a bunch of people who are up front, especially Outlaw starts on the first line. So it's really nice to be like third or fourth line back. It's so dusty. Like these races especially, it's so dusty. Hopefully you can see it. Let's push Alex, let's push him, let's try and catch up to him. He's flying, he knows I'm there. I gotta keep the power on. You can hear his two strokes smoking away a little bit. But everyone remember, four strokes are louder. So he knows I'm behind him. The crazy part about this track is it's so dusty. I know he's just right there. Every hill, every valley, you're like, okay, just one more corner. He is still the same distance apart. I just can't close that gap. That's pretty fun. Biggest key takeaway I've found riding these is rider position. There he is up at the top. Rider position on the bike makes a huge difference. The more you can push your weight forward and back, but most importantly, the forward position gives you so much more controllability of the bike. And we're not just talking like a little bit, like I'm sitting on top of the tank. If you watch the Supercross guys, they do it too. They are up where you fill the fuel in and they are right on it and you can swing corners with so much speed. With your mid seat, you are going so slow around that corner. Now, it's hard to remember all that while you're in this race mode, but if you can, you can keep a lot more speed. And as I watch back on this video, I feel like my consistent pace is pretty good. There's a few sections I slow down on. Most of the time it's probably because I'm tired or I just don't want to crash. If I can get over those two factors, which this year with the winter gym, I'm getting there. And the fear of crashing, it's always going to be there, but if we can push it a little bit more, we can get it. Alright, we're catching up to him. We're getting more tight technical. This is such a fast, fun track. This has to be the fastest track on the circuit. You can tell the dust is still in the air. I haven't seen him in a minute, but the dust is still every second corner. You come around, you can see it hovering. He's just up and over this hill. Yeah, you see this spot? There it is. He's just, just a little bit ahead. We've got to catch him. We can do it. We can do it. A little bit sketchy in areas. You kind of come out and you're like, what the heck? It's all ready to help. People have chewed it up. It's all good fun, though. What do you guys think? Would you do this? Would you join this race? Anyone who hasn't raced, I would highly recommend it. Even for the riding of a new area. Anyway, Midwest MX, if you've not seen him, also a great YouTuber. He's building like a whole YouTube crew out there back in the England, which really enough he lives not too far away from where I was actually born. So he's riding areas I would have seen as I grew up of a weird circle of things you can see oh ah yes the old log everyone stalls you can see him struggling there it's always kind of fun when you're behind someone you get in this flow zone they're going an appropriate pace you're like okay this is good this is good i can keep this pace and then they pull over you're like oh, okay now i've got to go really fast to make sure they know i'm actually the deserving of this spot without fault which is Sometimes easier said than done. Let's go get some speed. You never feel it when you're riding, but this is fun. Sometimes you're stressed. Sometimes it removes your stress. You're so focused on riding, it's hard to think of anything else. But this looks fun. It's hard to even remind yourself that you're having fun. You're so focused on being like, I gotta finish this, I gotta go. Skin on my hands being ripped off. Who cares? Go, go, go. It's just a natural thing to compete. We all watch hockey or basketball or motocross. 
and watch it all. Humans love to compete. They're just keeping a consistent pace here. I'm liking this. This is actually really good. Oh, nice long video too. Like I say, this was an hour and a half at least of video footage. And a lot of it was like this, where it's relatively flowy, relatively fast, not too boring. It was hard to cut out sections. All right, coming into the home stretch. And this is only one lap. I, I cut all this down to pretty much one lap, which is crazy. This is a long lap. And that's how it feels as well when you're racing. Sometimes you're like, this is impossible. I can't believe I haven't finished it. Oh, I thought that was Alex there for a second. That's yes, another guy. I'm catching up to him. Looks just like him. Looks like he's on a Yamaha 250 probably. And again, you've got a mix of trails. So when you see the blue, or the purple, and the orange, that means we've got two two groups on this end, on this one. So this two ranges the kind of newer people. And then when it's orange only, you know it's the fastest section doesn't really mean much, you barely pay attention to it when you're actually racing, it's actually hard to pay any attention and just flying along, but for anyone watching, that's why there's a mix of arrows. You definitely kind of wait until this year to do this one. It's fast, it's flowing, and there's Alex again. I think he overtook me after I overtook him very quickly, because I had a small little fall that I could cut out of the video. And then he unfortunately stalled and just could not get that bike going again. Couldn't get it running, which was pretty disappointing for him. It happens. It happens to the best of us. You gotta push it all the way out. If I remember correctly, this might have been the last race of the season for him. And he just slowly put it out. And we ended up waiting for a new piston and the whole supply chain issues. Pretty much ruined the rest of his season. These open sections are sometimes tricky. There's so many, you know, cattle trails and quad trails which kind of all bleed together. You're looking around, you're like, am I on the right one? There's flags everywhere, but there just isn't always enough flags to be like, I confidently know where I'm going. Anyway, guys, hopefully you like this. The last one got good views. I was happy with that. I think we got like over 600 views in a short amount of time. So hopefully there's some people new to this channel enjoying the moto stuff. I'll keep making it. I enjoy making these ones. It's fast. It's flowy. It's just like mountain biking. If you haven't been motocrossing, it's just like mountain biking. Except you're always going fast. There is no slow. You're breathing hard. It is the exact same. So check it out if you have them. Let me know if you enjoy this route and enjoy this section or not. And uh, otherwise, hopefully we'll see you guys again. And we'll do more of these. I have lots more to go. I have some more mountain biking stuff. I have gigabytes of data coming. So I film like every ride. And with all the videos I've made, I've probably posted a quarter of them. I have more than I know what to do with. Some weeks if I go on <laughs> two, three mountain bike rides, ride my dirt bike, go for a run, I have terabyte in a week's worth of data and I can't keep up with that. Anyway, good luck and have fun.